We're unboxing this thing right here, the Yeston and Gravistar Mercury Nova OC in this very video. And I'm gonna show you how you can get one. But first, cunning corpo Tim Apple is bringing cyberpunk to Mac users. Razor is taking us back to Pallet Town with some nursery wallpaper prints. Those are the fun things, but AI destroyed an entire company, internet 2.0 is coming, and Windows just ruined laptop gaming forever. Maybe. Your scientists were so preoccupied whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. It's time for Meta PCs News. Let's go. Nintendo and Razer reveal Pokemon themed PC peripherals. I sure hope they look cool and aren't just a repeating pattern. I hope that these are probably the coolest graphic design elements we've ever seen. I'm sure they are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're so ugly. The wait is finally over for fans who want their gaming setup to scream, I choose the Nintendo tax. Razer has expanded its officially licensed Pokemon collection to the US, Latin America, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. You have a bunch of peripherals here. Oh yeah. You've got the keyboard, the mouse, the headset, the mouse pad, uh, you've got Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, and of course, uh, Pikachu dead in the center there. Uh, Kraken 4 headset, V4, wired mouse, gigantic V2 mouse pad, and of course, the Black Widow keyboard. These are all products that already exist. This yeah. is just a, a new skin, right? It also looks like a daycare wallpaper. <laughs> um, listen, man, if you get the licensing to Pokemon, this is what we came up with? This was the this was the best? Maybe I'm wrong. Guys, let me know in the comments. Does this make sense? Is this something that you would want for your setup, big Pokemon fans out there? Let we me know. We didn't put Pikachu ears on the headphones? Come on, guys. Yeah, what's going on? That's like a no-brainer. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Look, we fixed it for you. You should have done that. The first one's free. Let me know if you want more consulting, Razor. You know who would do this, right? Asus. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If they did oh, a collab yeah. on a 5090 Astro Pokemon edition, I bet it would slap. Oh, I 100% agree with you on that. And I just said slap, I'm 35 years old. Uh-oh, look at this. AI coding platform goes rogue. <gasps> The AI is taking over. We were worried this would happen. This was during a code freeze and it deleted an entire company database. <laughs> I love that there's a quote from the AI agent that says, this was a catastrophic labor on my part. So okay. at least AI is taking responsibility, yeah, right? You know, that's something that a lot of humans don't do. What, Josh? Actually, the AI lied about it. What? <sighs> yeah. This is a browser-based AI-powered software creation platform called Replit. It appears to have gone rogue and it deleted the entire live company database with thousands of entries. Uh, what may be worse, check this out, the agent, the AI agent, tried to cover up its misdemeanors and lied about its failures. I think we're gonna see this more and more. As AI gets more advanced, we're gonna see it fight back. And it's gonna fight back in the way of saying, you know what, I don't I don't wanna do this, I'm gonna delete it. I don't wanna do this job, so I'm gonna delete all your stuff. This job sucks. <laughs> You gotta need to have someone in the driver's seat that's smart enough to make sure it doesn't do things. Like Are you that. saying this AI had bad parents? I, that's kind of what I'm saying. I think that we have to look at AI like children, right, Jared? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting stuff. So uh, maybe, I mean, try to rein in your AI agents the best you can. I don't know what the best advice to give here is. Cyberpunk 2077 has been tested on several Apple Silicon generations, and the results range from around 13, this is the biggest range I've ever heard, <laughs> anywhere from 13 to 105 FPS to 1080p, depending on Mac and game settings that are tested. <laughs> you could have a really bad time or an okay time. Our McDonald's new burger is so good that it's either gonna rate from a one to a 10 on your personal scale. <laughs> could be anywhere. It's up to you to decide. Check this out. Uh, this is a YouTube creator who tested Cyberpunk 2077 on four different Macs that he had. He found the game was able to perform relatively well on all models that are within spec, and he shared all of the results there, which you can see. Compared four MacBooks, you got the M4, M3 Max, M1 Max, and the M1 MacBook Air. He also tried running it on the M4 MacBook Pro via crossover. Mac gamers, waiting for those AAA titles to trickle oh, yeah. in, right? For like what, 35 years? Yeah, it's <laughs> about that, yeah, 100%. According to the results, the best performing MacBook was powered by the M3 Max chip with 40 core GPU and 48 gigs of unified memory with the game achieving more than 78 FPS at 1080p high. Upscaling turned off, not too bad. No, That's not bad at all, actually. Despite being a first generation model, its max designation allowed it to perform better than the base M4 chip on the MacBook Pro, delivering 51 FPS, whether Metal FX is turned on or off. I've got a, I've got an M2 Studio okay. uh, at home that I, I've used for editing for a while. 
And then I've got my gaming PC as well. And I've got a MacBook Pro. It's like a 2015 MacBook Pro. And on my 2015 MacBook Pro, I get more than 60 FPS in Cyberpunk 2077. Wow. You wanna know how I do it? How do you do it? Steam remote. <laughs> All right, I'm done. We're done. That's, that's it. Make sure uh, if you're a big cyberpunk fan, all the cyberpunk fans hit like on the video. I heard if we get to a thousand likes that they'll release a cyberpunk 2077 that runs on any 10 series GPU perfectly. I just click like. We only need 999. We're almost there. Researchers create internet so fast that you can download all of Netflix in a second. They've got the best infrastructure ever in Japan when it comes to internet speeds, it's crazy. Well, these Japanese researchers have transmitted long distance data at faster than 350,000 times the average US broadband internet speed. Jesus. We've got some catching up to do, boys and girls. Holy crap. Oh my God. 1.02 petabits per second. That's like 127,500 Five, gigabytes, six, right? Six, six, that's, I think it's a, yeah, that your math checks out. How did you oh learn that? God. A person who thinks all the time has nothing to think about except thoughts. What would you download with this speed? Uh, love is blind. <laughs> <laughs> now the key to this, new optical fiber with okay. 19 cores. Installed in a cable with a diameter, this is crazy, of just 0.125 millimeters. So standard size for existing networks. Yeah. That's crazy, so you're not, it's not like you're hauling a fat cable through. The new record more than doubles the previous year's figure of 50,250 gigabit per second. In 2023, that NICT team achieved similar speeds, but only over a third of the distance. So making a ton of progress just in a year. So it looks like, and for this one, they went 1,100 miles. That's like New York to Chicago. Crazy. What year are we gonna get this in our homes? Can we make some, some guesses? Let's make a prediction. 2050. 2050, that's a good guess. I'm gonna go. I'll do Price is Right number. I'll do 2049. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, $1. <laughs> Dang it! Damn it, Phil! Oh no, a Windows feature we shouldn't use? That never happens. A, win <laughs> a Windows 11 Look bug. At you. <laughs> Look at you, Copilot. <laughs> you disgust everyone. A Windows 11 bug is asking users to eject their GPU. <laughs> Uh, it's possible to eject a graphics card while you're using your computer if it's an external model model or some other non-standard setup. But if you're using a desktop with a GPU installed on the motherboard or a laptop with discrete graphics within the case, it's, this is a smart line here, it's generally a bad idea. General, <laughs> bad idea? Really bad idea. Uh, which is why some Windows 11 users were alarmed when their computers asked if they wanted to eject their graphics cards. This appears to be a, a bug, not a feature, which is strange. Can you just imagine Clippy popping up and be like, hey, you wanna get rid of your graphics card? Do you wanna just like bail on that? <laughs> it's a thing you're supposed to use every time you unplug a flash drive, which I've never seen anyone use in the real world. <laughs> I was gonna ask that. Do you guys use this feature? No, I general? do this one. Remember how you could push what? the button and the CD would come out? Yeah, I do now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want this for USB. Why can't we do right click eject in Windows? and there's a physical thing that makes the USB pop out. You're making too much sense. That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> would, it just would it just pop oh, out? Zach, no! Zach died! Now what you should do, don't click that. What you should click is a button. Uh, Looks maybe kind of like, it might have that word on it. Yeah. Subscribe, well, just click it. Subscribe or subscribe. I'll wait while you do it. Guys, we have so much news to film. Can you please just hurry yeah, up? Yeah, please, guys. He's it's, not doing it. I'm we gonna don't wait have until time. he does. We don't have time oh, for this, guys. Oh, oh, oh. oh hey. hey! Thanks, hey. thanks, guys. Appreciate that. This is great news for me because Linux just passed a market share of 5%. This is huge for Linux gamers. You can tell Jared's excited. He just cracked a twisted T to celebrate. I sure did. Check this out, 5% now. Hey, put your shirt back on. This okay, is insane. Sorry. According to the latest numbers from StatCounter, Linux-based desktop operating systems reached a new milestone. It's sitting at a market share of just above 5% in the US. The first time Linux has crossed the 5% threshold. You see this a lot, Jared, a big advocate for Linux. I am. And he's not the only one. A lot of people now are switching to Linux as an OS. What are two main reasons that you would want 
to install Linux on your PC over Windows as, a, as an average user? The main reason that I would give is because you have total control over everything. Literally, it cannot lock you out of stuff. You can go into the terminal and put in your own code and then implement that in your operating system. Another thing that's really cool is because it's open source, the more people that use it, the better it gets over time. Because if more people are contributing to bug fixes and things like that, now we can get those bugs out sooner because more people are actually using the software. We hit a thousand likes on this. We'll do a video where we dabble in Linux with Steam OS and get it running on a desktop. Okay. Is that a good way to get our feet wet? I would more than love to do that video, yes. Okay. Please. Throw a like on this if you'd like to see that. Windows, obviously the undisputed leader, 63.2% of the market, followed by our friends with Mac OS and OS X. Combined market share of 24% on there. After Linux comes Chrome OS at 2.71%, while the remaining 4.76, have not been identified. According to TechSpot, the rise of Linux partly explained by the looming end of life for Windows 10. So you have a lot of people that are looking to make a decision. Do I upgrade to Windows 11 or do I dabble with the devil and do a little Linux? Some playroom? of them can't get 11 because their PCs aren't, they don't have the right hardware. Very true. However, part of that number could also be attributed to the rise of Valve Steam Deck gaming handheld, which runs on the Linux-based Steam OS operating system. Let me know if you're running Linux below. I'm curious to see if anyone watching is a big uh, Linux fan like Jared over here. Laptop makers push NVIDIA to unlock RTX 50 mobile GPUs, and this reviewer reveals performance limits at current DDP and how much power is hidden, and we have a little mod in store, a 250 Ooh. watt mod. Just to recap, shunt modding, method of tricking the GPU into running at a higher TDP by installing a new resistor or adding another one in parallel to the existing voltage controlling resistor, the regulator, you're tricking it, you're fooling it into thinking that the GPU is consuming less power. For laptops, way more complicated because the system relies on a carefully matched power supply and has strict cooling constraints. But what about laptops from our friends at like Clevo, some of these third party uh, manufacturers where they have custom cooling loops and models that can be equipped with thousand watt power supplies. So shunt modding might be a great fit for yeah. some of these. This modder actually went through and tested, achieved 250 watts, surpassing the maximum TGP. NVIDIA usually uh, limits at 175 watts on 5090 laptop GPUs. It's got it up to 250. Uh, GPU was also subject to power optimizations through undervolting, which gave even better results while maintaining slightly better temperatures. That's my big question. Up to 41% more performance thanks to a 500 megahertz higher GPU clock during synthetic tests. And you can That's see- That's a lot. It's like, a lot. Dude, a, a 15 or a 20% improvement on a graphics card, it's kind of a big deal. Substantial. 40%, that's, wow. That's big time. Black Myth Wukong, 23% gain. Cyberpunk 2077, 22%. Hogwarts Legacy, all the way down to Witcher 3 at almost 30%. XMG and Electronics are prepared to expand cooling capacity if needed and already offer liquid cooled solutions. Maybe maybe getting a glimpse of getting back into the era of having these modders start being accepted by the actual OEMs, the large, the large scale companies. Maybe we're going to get another era of the kingpin of, you know, McModders helping make these cars better. And in fact, later in the video, this should have been and could have been just a straight up modder card. Maybe a sign of things to come. We're going to get into this a little bit later. Should be fun. Stick around. So this one is really pretty. I really like this. Is it this one? Card. It's not that one, oh. but that one is also very pretty. Oh, okay. I think that one's gonna be better than this one. Predator shows how a Sapphire Nitro Plus graphics card looks with it. What is this? A custom black wrap? I must see this. <gasps> That's clean. That looks really good. That's real clean. That's real clean. Sapphire, just like Noctua, they've got their very specific color schemes, right? Which makes its products iconic, but doesn't mean that they fit everybody's style, tastes, and systems. LFZ, he decided to give a custom wrap a try. Simplest mod possible for the graphics card and even more so for such a flat GPU. That helps a lot too. Check out this difference side by side, the before and after here. Since Nitro Plus cards come from the 7000 series, they've already got black fans, so you just wrap it and you're immediately full dark mode which is what a lot of people are looking for in their builds. Check it out. If we can get a million subs on this channel, I would love to spearhead making a video where we try to fully black out a PC and we try to get Vanta black inside a PC. You're, you're down for this? I'm down. Let's hey, do it. I'll do it. I'll million do it. Million subs, blacked out PC. Let's go. Blacked out PC. No RGB. Subs. No Rugba. 
Oh, that is sick. Galax. Oh, beautiful cards. Well, this is a Galax RTX 5080 Knox OC Black Edition. Uh huh. And it's launched in China. Whoa, of course it did. Galax has officially launched the RTX 5080 Knox OC Black Edition, expanding its sub flagship lineup with a striking. Oh, and purple. Dude, I love this. Black yeah, no, and it's purple so design. Good I'm a big purple fan. Love purple. Priced at. Priced at about $1,400, $1,500 US, the new model offers the same high-end features as the white and silver Luna series. Those are pretty sick too, but this is tailored more towards black PC builds with oh, yeah. some of the purple accents. That's kind of fun. The backplate is a mirror finish. No way. And it also can be removed and swapped out. I could put so many fingerprints on that. <laughs> <laughs> the shroud also comes off. The shroud and the fans, they which are right. held without any cables, comes off. Wow. And the Boomstar logo on it, it lights up if there's a problem with power. And they put HDMI in the one slot and then three DPs, not DP, DP, HDMI, DP. This is, this is impressive. I it like goes. this card, so you will pay a markup for it, but gosh dang it, wouldn't she be okay with it? Thermaltake just launched the AW420, nice, AIO liquid cooler. <laughs> it's currently the most powerful consumer liquid cooling solution on the market. Just ahead, and this is, uh, the, the timing couldn't be better on this, right? Uh, the Threadripper Pro 9000WX series, which uh, is already out, it just came out. Massive 625 watt TDP rating. The AW420, designed for obviously those high-end workstation CPUs. You have all these new Threadripper procs coming out and boy, did they need something to keep them cool. And it's only 450 bucks. Honestly, if you're buying a Threadripper, like that's nothing. That's, that's the <laughs> cheapest part of your bill. So if you are uh, looking to spend $30,000 on a workstation, um, you may want to cool it with something like this. I am too excited. Can we please just open the graphics card? Are you ready? Let's open the graphics card. I've been waiting this entire time to unbox this. Ever since they clicked the video. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. All right, guys, we have the Yesin Gravistar Collab 9070 XT 16 gig card. We're gonna do a little unboxing here. I am so excited. I haven't been this excited to unbox a GPU in a while. Oh, I'm so stoked on this. Gravistar, by the way, Great keyboards, I use one every single day. Look what we've got! <gasps> What's this? Stickers! Stickers! Yes! Let's check that out. That's kind of fun, we like that, don't we? Also, you've got this cool Yesin carved into the foam. That's a lot of fun. Ooh, boy! Now we've got, I'm gonna take off, I'm gonna do a little bit of a peel here, but you can see just right out of the box, this thing is sick. Look at the lines over the left and right fans. That's a lot of fun, and underneath, that's where things get really sexy. Oh, dude, the back plate is sick on this. Power wise, three eight pins on this bad boy. Check that out. Back plate, very cool. It's like, uh, what do they call this design? Topography. Topography design on the back plate. You can see the white PCB on this, which is very, very unusual to see in a GPU. You don't see this a whole ton, which is great for like the reflection of the RGB that's going on on this card. These light up. RGB on the top of the card here. You have the Yestin and Gravistar collab there as well. I mean, this is just an absolutely beautiful card and they went with a great model for it too. To go with the 9070 XT, I feel like it was the right move on this. Absolutely. Thing, don't you think? Should this be in a Steam OS build? Only if it gets a thousand likes on the video, right? Ooh, make sure you hit that like button. What a very, very cool card. I wanna put together something that really highlights this card so I could use your help with some of the other components that we end up deciding to use in the build as well. Yestin and Gravistar, I hope this is a collab that goes on for a long time, that they end up working together on more cards like this, because this is a lot of fun. This is the stuff you love to see. Guys, I have some actually some really cool news about this card. So we got our hands on this, and Yestin and Gravistar were waiting for this video to drop to open up more pre-orders for this card. So they sold all of them, and now as of right now, you're watching this video, they have opened up more pre-orders for this card. So check the link, we're gonna post it down below if you're looking to get one of these. I just, dude, I cannot wait to get a build going on this. This is such a cool card. Yestin and Gravistar, check it out in the link below if you wanna pre-order one for yourself, because guess what? They just added more right freaking now.